the roots. <laughs> so uh, we were talking about <laughs> just how uh, how much like a tree we are as creatives, just expanding in so many different directions and growing in multiple directions at once. And I know it sounds kind of like mildly cliche. We're like trees. But no, it really is um, growing in multiple directions at once and taking in as much as you can. And I feel as, as a creative person, if it's interesting to us, it does not matter what the subject is. It's going to be processed in some way. Mm. And, it, you know, the vast assortment of topics. So for people to say things like, well, why the hell should I listen to an actor talk about anything. Well, it, I mean, acting really has nothing to do with it. That's just something that we enjoy doing. The bigger part of it is just having an artistic disposition, which whether you're a musician or a visual artist, or even if you work on the tech side of things, you have an artistic disposition and are more or less inclined to want to know a lot about a lot of different things. Easily excitable. Easily excited. Well, I think it says that on my Instagram handle. I like what you said, and I know that it sounds like it's cliche about being like a tree, but as much as we extend outward into the discomfort of our environment of, you know, the things we don't know and extending into the unknown and trying to grasp more experience, grasp more knowledge, not in a grasping like, as they said in Star Wars, the tighter your grip, the more galaxies will slip through your fingers. But to have that gentle <laughs> kind of just open extension out into understanding, which doesn't mean that it's a solid understanding. And because that is the truth of the situation is that your knowledge is always in movement and adjusting and swaying, right? That you have to have an equal amount of grounding, which either means a very, very deep root holding you centered or an equally expansive system of roots to keep you grounded by the roots. <laughs> and oh, mm, yes, by the roots. <laughs> you know what? I was wondering, I, I asked some family members, what, what image pops into your head when you hear the phrase by the roots? A carrot. <laughs> and one person says, I see a person holding their own hair, you know, gripping their own hair by the root, like they're, they're frustrated in a process. And someone else said, I think of flowers. And then someone else said, I think of trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think of trees too. Yeah. yeah. But I really liked, because when I was thinking of the name of the podcast and what would really match the smattering of concepts that I was hoping to bring to the table is the hair pulling. Mm -hmm. but I really actually thought, no, that works. <laughs> that's, that's part of it. <laughs> um, your hair again looks really good today. Are you doing your soda water rinse? So I washed it today and I used... This deep conditioner, placenta conditioner. <laughs> We're all conditioned by our placenta. It's true. I mean, <laughs> we come into the world conditioned by our placenta. So like, what is this? I'll use it. So you didn't make this placenta formula yourself? No, <laughs> no, no. Although I know there are people out there that probably do that. They probably put it into like a food processor and, they, and then they make cookies in that food processor for their school fundraisers. That or mix it with like uh, oils in there of some kind. This is vibing a lot like a Fight Club scenario or like a Sweeney Todd <laughs> scenario. And yet it's just self-care. <laughs> I know it is. It's just self-care. So, yeah, I, I washed my hair and I deep conditioned it with this stuff. And um, I actually use a blow dryer. It looks gorgeous. Thanks. I woke up with some hair on my head today and that was you know, exciting enough because I seem to always be pulling out fistfuls of it. You know what I just realized? I just realized what I would love on this podcast is if we do a visual with it. Oh yeah. An object that can be kept on your desk or something in the background that can be visual. Well, I need to set up an, a specific office or at least office area for the podcast recording if we do that, which I would love to, but I mean, there aren't a lot of spaces that are very accessible in my little home. <laughs> I don't know about you. No. Even if we just get like a little mini mantle or altar, like a little mini altar for the podcast. I don't even have my own desk anymore. 
Oh, so you're like the Scully in this X-Files scenario. You don't even have your own desk seven Mm -hmm. years later until Agent Doggett joins. And then you take over Mulder's (laughs) desk. (laughs) Yeah, I don't even have that. I don't have a desk. And our house is so limited in space. It's hard. We just need to be able to start using ceilings. I mean, let's be realistic. The ceiling is a waste in space. You know what? It makes perfect sense. If you could put some shelving up there that is... Anti-gravity. Yeah, that just maybe, it might just lower the ceiling a little bit. Living in a small place, tons of clutter is just visible. And so Mm -hmm. we're trying to find ways to manage the clutter and just get rid of things we don't need and hide the clutter. If we're not using it, then we put it in something. I got to say, that's hard for an artist. Oh you know, my God. like that's what has always been the messiest for me is like making art is messy. You have to have different kinds of glue around and different kinds of pigments. You've got color pencils and waxy things and oily things and acrylic things and different brushes for different mediums and all kinds of different pencils and dusts you, and erase, you remember, different erasers. Remember when you came to my house, to my garage, and I had all that stuff that I was unloading? And I had a collection of all of the like detergent cups in a stack. Yes. Telltale sign of an artist. (laughs) That was a year's worth of detergent. It's that cup that comes attached to your like mega jug. So I'm frustrated (laughs) because I tried to use some of those sheets of detergent. They come in a flat mailing envelope and it's a detergent that's dehydrated in a way that it's in a sheet and it's supposed to dissolve and go into the machine. But I have a water saving machine. I really genuinely don't believe no matter what detergent I've used that my low water front loader has ever really cleaned my clothes. But those sheets, I can only find the one brand of this no plastic packaging, right? And there's such an, a low plastic or no plastic culture emerging that I'm surprised that I can't find these very basic every day we have to wash dishes every day we're washing our clothes every day we're using deodorant like, please, let's fix these. I mean, like plastic jugs for the detergent is stupid. It's mostly water that's making it liquid. Like, please, at least there's powder detergent. This is kind of loosely related to the topic, but very interesting. Everything is very loosely related. Yeah, Yeah. go for it. Yeah. One of my family members had a friend who had a, he had a problem with smells. Like he had an issue with odor. He was, you know, he was frustrated about it and he talked about it. And then I thought about my own laundry situation and smells and having kids and There are those times when you're doing a load of laundry and you're like, why does it, I washed everything. Why does it smell like mold? Mm. Why does my wash smell moldy? It doesn't make any sense. So I did some research and like, if you wash your clothes and you dry them and they're clean, but they smell like they're dirty, they smell Mm -hmm. moldy. Mm -hmm. If the clothes are dark colors, like dark blue, dark dyes, blacks, Mm. there's a formaldehyde that they use in order to hold the (gasps) color in place. So when you're washing (laughs) your clothes, yeah, yeah. When you're washing dark clothing together, and even though it's clean and it smells like it's moldy. That musty smell, that weird, like sickly, sweet, icky. That Musty smell is the formaldehyde from the dye. But why Why would the formaldehyde increase this icky smell? Isn't formaldehyde meant to like not let things decompose? I mean, I've smelled formaldehyde. You've smelled it, haven't you? Yes. I yeah, have. it's, 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 a, it's beyond pungent. I think it's like it's the hair away from, from what decomp smells like, which is another topic. Mm, <laughs> yes, not today, not today. <laughs> Um, <laughs> many sensitive people like to wear black. So this is a problem because if you're a sensitive person, you're going to wear those dark colors and then those dark colors are going to smell. Yeah. What the hell? And then mold, actual mold. And then formaldehyde is not healthy anyway. Right. But mold toxicity is this really insidious neurological influence because the toxins that molds emit are just this constant irritation on the immune system. And eventually it can cause anxiety and depression and nervousness. And you don't know that the mold is even there necessarily. A lot of people don't have a good sense of smell. So many people in my life are like, oh, yeah, I got sick once and 
just stopped smelling. There are people that, you know, they pour milk into their cereal and not notice. It was sour. Sour, yeah. yeah. And I worked in specialty foods and beverages for so long that I, I always felt like I had a better sense of taste than smell, but I am really sensitive to smells as far as if it's registering, I'm having a reaction of some kind. It's either like a positive emotional reaction or more often than not, this, maybe this says something about me, but I'll have nausea, I'll have a headache, which reminds me, I go for a walk last night and I could not see a person smoking a cigarette, but it was like a whole block smelled like it, just the cigarette smoke was trapped around me. It was huh. so intense. And then I get free of that and like, ah, you know, delicious night air. And then I'm whacked in the face by, I think this was worse actually than the cigarette smoke. I think it's dryer sheets. There's some <laughs> detergent or dryer sheet. And I mean, the whole block was so thick with it. I'm like, oh, what did they do? Put like five in the dryer? What is this? And I'm thinking about, I don't live in the city, partly because I want to be able to see stars and mm -hmm. smell fresh air. And I don't get to have either of those things really. Because people are burning their ovens, they're using detergents, they don't smell it. And to me, I'm like, I don't know how you could ever associate that smell with clean or freshness. Mm -hmm. And it physically makes me feel terrible. I mean, like I have my windows all open. I'm calmly sipping a nighttime cup of tea. I turn on my television <laughs> program and then I go, well, like I'm having, you know, and it's so sudden because it comes in like a freaking wall of evil and I have to slam shut all the windows. I'm sensitive that way. I am too. It's unfair. It's like you, when you're, especially when you're going on those night walks and you feel like you're you almost allow yourself to kind of meditate and it seems like could be somewhat otherworldly if you're just kind of floating and walking and thinking and mm -hmm. it's very peaceful. And then, oh, wow. Wow. That's bad. Somebody's using some kind of something or other. <laughs> and then you're reminded that human beings exist. Oh, yep. And yep. yeah. And I believe that that is why there's a word called nature, which separates humans from the natural world. Even yeah. if we believe that humans are of this earth, there's a distinct difference between the human world and the natural <laughs> world. It, even if it is solely the synthetic sense. <laughs> oh <laughs> gosh. Don't use body spray, please everyone. Stop it with the body sprays with the synthetic sense. If I go to an event, if I'm in a movie theater, if I'm anywhere where I have to sit in proximity to another person where they're wearing a synthetic odor, I mean, I get the sweat, I feel ill, and I feel like I'm gasping. And I, I don't ever want someone to feel like they have made a personal choice where uh, you wear a perfume because you think it's nice and that you, you're sharing a niceness. You're, you have an attractive, I mean, that's what perfume is, right? Like it's, it's meant to be this attractive thing, but I'm physically made ill. I mean, I cannot go into a business that has a Glade plug-in. Yeah, I don't like that. I cannot walk into a bathroom where someone has sprayed Febreze. Mm -hmm. I had an experience this week where I walked into a bathroom and someone had like a baby powder scented, uh, quote, air freshener. And I, and I don't gag easily. I almost threw up twice and I just had to walk through and grab a paper towel. That's all I had to do. And I was actually dry heaving. My mom says I'm a canary. I'm an indicator for anything that is probably not good for anyone, but there are telltale signs for me and there's more of a buildup for other people. You definitely sound like your olfactory is very sensitive. Do you sense vibration too? Like, um, it could be like, oh, that must be a truck up the road kind of thing. Yeah, but especially when I was younger and higher frequency things were, I think, more disturbing. I almost feel it like in my face. Mm -hmm. It's almost sour. The same kind of feeling you get in your face when something's sour. Mm hmm mm hmm like in your jaw or in your, not quite in the sinuses, I would hear the TV, just a TV being on has a high pitch. All of this is connected. It's like a T to your nose, down to your throat. Your nose and throat, baby. It's, yeah. Um, sensitivity in the ear can affect the throat. And when you're having allergies, of course, you're going to get a headache and you're going to have tension in your brow. Um, your eyes will water. All these things are connected. So... Um, it could be an allergic thing, the, the, the sensitivity to smell if you're having a rela reaction that way, definitely. There are probably certain amounts of, of toxins or irritants. I don't think it's just like, oh, I don't like that smell. No. And I think the intensity. Mm -hmm. Most people need something stronger to smell. Mm -hmm. It's so gross. <laughs> 
Thanks for tuning in to By the Roots with hosts Nicole Berry and Corinne Maders. Music by Mim Paquin. Thank you.